Hello my friends, welcome back, and welcome to a fresh This or That. This or That is the clever title that I have given this series on my channel, where I help you decide between two or more products that you are agonizing between. I test tons and tons and tons of products here on my channel. I review them. I try to offer as much nuance as I possibly can by swatching them and comparing them by color theory and by formula and trying to let you experience them in 4K. I have an encyclopedic collection over here to my left where I can pull a lot of products from. And if that sounds interesting to you, then consider subscribing if you have not already, like if this is your first video or if you've been watching a couple and you haven't subscribed yet. But I went over to my Instagram stories, at heykaki on Instagram, and I asked y'all, as I always do, for this or that questions, and y'all delivered. Oh my gosh, there are so many, there's no possible way I can get through all of them, but they are so good. So I'm going to swatch them, I'm going to tell you how they compare as objectively as possible, and then I'm gonna tell you, like, if it was you and me just hanging out, how I would recommend that you go between the two, or maybe I'll recommend another one. So. Without further ado, y'all, let's go ahead and jump in. Y'all, I screenshotted all of them, there's so many. So the first thing that someone, <laughs> we're gonna talk about, that someone asked about, was the Tula Signature Glow Face Spray versus MAC Fix Plus. So these are both loves of mine. This one is a refreshing, brightening face mist, and Tula is always rich with probiotics. And you can see down here, it actually has a shaker ball in there, and that's going to shake up the iridescence that is in the formula. So it is going to spritz a little bit of radiance on your skin. I personally love it. It took me forever for it to notice that it was even happening. And this smells really lovely. It's a beautiful setting mist and it's good for your skin. MAC Fix Plus is just the OG. It's just gonna give you that glossy, melted skin kind of finish. And that's why I have one of these and I have never worked my way all the way through it, even though I really like it. And I have multiple, multiple, multiple backups of MAC Fix Plus and MAC Fix Plus Magic Radiance in my stash and they come up in every single empties video. So if it's my recommendation, I'm going to go for MAC Fix Plus. They're both beautiful, but MAC is going to give you the more melted, smoothed glycerin finish. Okay, next, the Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Foundation versus the number one day Chanel Red Camellia Revitalizing Foundation. These are really similar. I'll go ahead and swatch them. I have them both here in B10. I also also have BD01. This was the first shade that I bought it in, and I actually end up mixing the two together sometimes on my face. You will not catch me saying a sour word about either of these. Okay, this does explain why I end up going for BD01 sometimes to mix in, and that is because this one right here is the Healthy Glow Foundation, and you see it's a little bit peacher than the same shade in the Red Camellia. So the Red Camellia is exclusive to Ulta and the Chanel website, and these are, you know, Chanel Le Beige. The whole line is available at a lot of places. So that is very interesting. This is why you play the game. This is why we come out and swatch things. Let's go ahead and swatch BD01 just for, just for giggles. Wow. Okay. So, yep. Somewhere in between these two is actual B10 over here. This is such an excellent shade match for me, but that's not what we're talking about today. I adore the Healthy Glow formula. If I'm going to pick between the two, it doesn't look like it here, but the Healthy Glow formula actually has more consistent coverage and isn't quite as radiant. It doesn't look like it in the swatches, but the way that it wears, I get more coverage out of Healthy Glow and you still get radiance and you still get hydration. It's just a little longer wearing and it's a little less sheer. And so that's why I prefer it. But like, I just don't think that you're going to be disappointed either way. But I do feel like the Red Camellia Revitalizing is just, uh, just this much closer closer to being like a true medium coverage and the Healthy Glow goes like medium to buildable. I know, but I would definitely say they're both very dry skin friendly. Interesting about the shades though. Not something that I like to see, the inconsistency between shades, you know, that's just kind of a pet peeve of mine, isn't it? All right. Next, we have the Victoria Beckham Lid Luster versus, this is a three far. This is the Scattered Light from Hourglass and then the Surratt Prismatic Eyes Single. Well, it's not a single, it's a duo because there's a cream on the top and then there is a beautiful topper underneath. So let me swatch these. And these are not all exactly the same color. I just pulled a few neutrals. This is something that we end up swatching in every single video. Everyone wants to see Scattered Light compared to something. So here's Scattered Light in Blaze from Hourglass. This is Starlight from Victoria Beckham in the Lid Luster. And then this is Prismatic Eyes. That is the neutral eyes single. And so it's gonna be that nice kind of like peachy shifting gold kind of thing. So actually these are <laughs> fairly comparable because that bottom 
bottom one is shifting to both colors a little bit. So it's very evident here. Scattered light, I mean, it's called scattered light, right? It's going to have this kind of spangly glitter over the top that as it spreads is just going to look kind of erratic, but like twinkly. I always say that the Lid Lesser is like a three in one texture because you have a foiled texture, you have a shimmer texture, and then you also have a little bit of a scattered light on top. I think that the Surratt one is really beautiful because it has the shift to it. And I think that that's what makes it really special, but it's not as eager to adhere to the skin as the other two are on its own. And I think that that's why it comes with kind of a putty consistency other eyeshadow. It's like a very, very intensely thick cream is to help it stick because like you can see how it kind of like kicked up on like the little hairs on the back of my hand. It just doesn't want to stick. And it's beautiful and lightweight and velvety the same way that all of Surratt's shadows are, but it just doesn't strike me as one of those like one and done singles the way that the other two do. It just doesn't come to mind for that because it's just a little bit less punchy on the eyes and it's a little bit more finicky to work with. I think that again, that's why it comes in a duo. And if I had to pick one, I think I would probably always go for the Hourglass. It's just the easiest to work with. Staying on Surratt for a moment, someone asked if I could compare the Surratt eyeshadows to the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadows. So both of these are infamously unique in their formulations, like the reputation precedes them, right? So I have here one of my kind of custom palettes that I've created out of her shadows. This is the Lisa Eldridge formula. And I'm going to show you just, you know, a few of the textures here, but the thing that they all have in common is this silicone rich, creamy, almost like primer consistency that they have on the eyes. And I did use these today. They're so smooth, they're so consistent, and they wear so long for me. And they do come in several textures. I think that they're utterly beautiful. The thing that I don't totally, it's not that I don't love it, it's just that I feel like when I'm thinking of a color, like when I wanna reach for a color in an eyeshadow, it doesn't exist yet in her eyeshadows. I feel like there were some tight color stories, but it's just not totally fleshed out yet in terms of every color that I would wanna use. And once they exist, you're gonna see more of them. Now, Surratt has just been around a lot longer, right? And so, I mean, first of all, this formula is incredible. Their powders are so unique. They are just a different breed of formula. Lisa Eldridge's are a different breed of formula too. And so the way that they both bond to the skin, but also blur so easily, it's just incredibly unique and so sexy and so sultry and so easy to work with. If the colors are not what's snagging you, right? You have a color story in both formulas that you would be satisfied with. It's just a matter, honestly, of how you like to apply them. The Lisa Eldridge ones go on a little bit slower because you're picking them up on a, it's a, it's got a putt, like, it's almost, it's like a grippy consistency, you know? Like when you touch it with your finger, it feels like it's gripping a little bit like a primer. And so it's a little slower to go on, but once it's on, it like wears forever and ever kind of thing. And this just goes on in more of like a fluffy, velvety, blends itself kind of way. I don't think you're gonna be mad either way. I think it really does come down to the color stories, but they are uniquely different formulas. Like this is just, this one really applies like the most ideal featherweight eyeshadow in the world. And the Lisa Eldridge ones apply apply like you're painting almost. Like you're using a paintbrush. That's how they feel. And they do blend. They blend, I mean, I'm wearing them right now. They blend seamlessly. They're so gorgeous. But it is, it's a different experience. Next, we have the Givenchy Prism Libre Skin Caring Concealer versus the Oma Concealer. Y'all know if you've been watching my channel lately that these are two of my favorite formulas to wear right now. I'm wearing this one today. Day, just because I was going for a little bit lighter face of makeup, not that you can tell. Either way, that kind of begins to allude to my feelings here. So the Uma is, this is the new formulation, the reformulation of the Stay Woke Concealer. This happens to be in White Pearl T 0.75. I have three shades in this, and this is one of the lighter ones. T1 is my like perfect skin tone match and this one's a little bit more brightening. And then the Givenchy is also in a little bit, it's an N95 and it's a little bit more of a brightening shade, but it's more yellow. And it does actually like match my undertones a little bit better than 0.75. The thing that you can really see here, especially as I sheer them out or attempt to, is that the Oma has more coverage. It just is higher pigment and a little bit lower on pure hydration in terms of almost like a skincare effect. It is called the Skin Caring Concealer. The Skin Caring Concealer is going to be, I think, like a seven, a seven and a half 
to an eight, maybe hmm, seven and a half on the coverage scale, on my arbitrary coverage scale. And the Uma is like up there at like a, an eight and a half, nine. I mean, you can get full, full from it. They're both super, super creamy. I would say that the Givenchy dries down a little bit thinner, whereas the Uma dries down a little bit more like glycerin-y. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the Pat McGrath one. It's like this meeting between like the Tarte Creamy Shape Tape and like the Pat McGrath concealer. And I love them both so much. So it's like, if you're looking for really intense coverage, I think that this one is flawless. It's unbelievable. And I like having high, well, I'm dry skinned anyway, but I like having hydration in a concealer, especially a high coverage concealer, because if you're going for high coverage, a lot of times you're trying to cover a blemish and a blemish is busy healing and it needs hydration so that it doesn't just like crack off your face throughout the day. Like, ugh. so it's almost like this helps keep it from doing that over the day. If I am, you know, covering breakouts and stuff like that. This is just, I mean, Tom called it shape tape for people over 30. It's just so easy. You can wear it as a foundation all over your face and it's actually pretty cost effective for what it is. It's 0.37 ounces for $37. So it's $100 an ounce. This one's also, I think it's been on sale quite a bit lately. Alma does a lot of sales. This is also not expensive. So they are both really, really lovely. More coverage and a little bit more presence on the skin, less coverage, more hydration and ultra lightweight. Okay, staying on concealer, somebody wanted me to compare the Salt New York Sneaky Balm. I think that we've done this before. In fact, I got a really critical comment recently, somebody being like, you always compare the same things in these videos. You already talked about that. I'm like, geez, they're spaced out and people don't go back and watch every single video, like calm down. But anyway, Sneaky Balm, this is in 12 and 12. I mean, look at that shade match, absolutely ridiculous. It almost disappears. And then the Glossy Stretch Concealer, I have it in G11. Now they are coming out with a new concealer, a new foundation, new version of the skin tint, I wanna say, and they are expanding all the shade ranges. Holy crap. Wow, those are really similar. I mean, I knew that, but as far as like my experience is concerned, so there's the Glossier and there's the Sneaky Balm. I use them interchangeably, but the Sneaky Balm is lighter weight on the skin. The Glossier Stretch Concealer is so hydrating, but it's also, if you really, really build it up, it's going to be prone to creasing a little bit more because I do feel like it has like a little bit more just like total overall presence on the skin. And the Sneaky Balm is, it's sneakier. There's just less of it on the skin. It might have a slightly higher pigment load. I'm not sure. I don't know exactly. It does feel like it has a slightly higher pigment pigment load though than the stretch concealer, but the stretch, I mean, they're both a revelation. They both are. I just, I think that I use the Glossier because it has more of a dewy finish. Whereas when you smooth out the Sneaky Balm, it does go to a more like natural finish. I don't think it's like ultra, ultra dewy. And sometimes, especially when I'm going for like no makeup makeup, I'm looking for dewy, dewy, dewy. And that's why I tend to go for the stretch concealer. Also, I've been using the stretch concealer on the new Make Beauty brush. This is the blender brush. And it like, look, it just goes in there so nicely. And I've just been, I didn't do it today, but like when I've been doing my kind of no makeup makeup looks, that's what I've been doing. I love, I love this little container. Next we have, and this is not all of them that I own, but the eyeshadow stick showdown. Y'all look at my new growth like my regrowth, it is so hilarious. Like if you see my hair like gelled down within an inch of its life, it's because I have the most hilarious like inch and a half of regrowth. I've been taking Nutrafol and it takes a couple months to start working, but once it starts working, your hair grows so fast. And so like my hair is just like radiating from my part. It looks so deranged. Like when I wake up in the morning and I try and tie my hair back, it's just like, ah! It's like this ridiculous little mohawk of just like crazy textured hair. So anyway, that that's what's happening right here. Like, it's like these did not exist a month ago. They're just eee. Anyway, I have the kind of top three that we have been talking about lately of my eyeshadow sticks. Victoria Beckham Eyewear, Eye Shaping Stilo from Make, and the new Rare Beauty All of the Above Weightless Eyeshadow Stick. Let's swatch. I want to put that on my eyeball now. Yeah, I felt like my eye look ended up too cool toned today for the rest of my makeup. I just was like reaching for a lot of random things. I also had a sty over the weekend and I might've definitely burned my eyelid with my hot compress. So dealing with that currently. I also just got done with a chemical peel. So if you're seeing little flakes of skin, understand it's because I was reborn. <laughs> 
Okay, so anyway. All right, so here, right here is Trench from Victoria Beckham in the eyewear. This is Cultivate from the Make Beauty Eye Stilo. And this is Growth. I would never call anything growth. A growth is a thing you don't, like, it, you know, if you think about it as a noun, growth is not something you want on your skin. You don't want a growth, you know? But either way, growth as in a good thing. What a gorgeous freaking color that is. Holy cannoli, that's beautiful. But I just put it on my eyeballs and it just doesn't quite have the same effect. It's like I want it to look like that and it just kind of, it just kind of doesn't. That kind of reveals my feels on this. And that is, I'm always going to recommend the Victoria Beckham above all of them because I think that it is just a flawlessly executed formula. But while she did come out with a lot of different shades, she did not come out with a tight color story in terms of, I don't know, comparing it to like the Make Eye Stilo, which is just a bunch, it's like a densely packed 10 shades of neutrals. And they don't really go light enough and deep enough, in my opinion, for what they were going for. It feels a little, like, three quarters baked to me, but I can't in good conscience, and y'all know how much I'm like a make beauty stan. Like I'm always rooting for them. I can't in good conscience recommend the eye stilos, mainly because I had like half of mine break off as soon as I tried to use them. And I feel like it's just a little bit of a flaw in the way that they chose the packaging and the delivery system. And there's so little product in there to begin with that I just feel like even though I respect the formula a lot and I use it, you're losing product in something where it's like, you already didn't have that much to begin with and I don't want you spending your money on that. You know, they're only $22, so it's like a lower buy-in, but at the same time, you're just wasting the product because like, I swear there's a 50-50 chance that like the tip is gonna break off. And the only thing about the Rare Beauty ones, I've said this before, I'll say it again. Like, first of all, none of them is matte. And so, I mean, I'm sure she'll put them out at some point, but the main thing with me is that with an eyeshadow stick, shimmer eyeshadow sticks just don't totally deliver on what I'm going for. I'm looking at myself in my monitor because I'm trying to see if it's coming across that like, it's a very pretty texture on my eyes, but it's just not giving me what I want from a shimmer eyeshadow. I think, and this is just a theory, but I think that because you're putting an eyeshadow in a stick delivery system, it has to be quite silicone rich in order to come off on the eyes and not be weird and waxy. I've used a lot of really bad ones when I was doing Clean Beauty, Clean Routine 2019, because they were so kind of like oily waxy and they were really impossible to work with. The silicone is what makes them not drag. It's what makes them go on really smoothly and wear all day. I think that silicone most of the time being, my understanding being kind of a matte texture, right? It's a, a beautiful kind of like smoothing, mattifying texture. Mm, that's gonna dampen any kind of shimmer that's in a formula a little bit. So beautiful, beautiful, yes, but like on my eyes, it's kind of like, where did it go? You know, that's not the fault of the Rare Beauty one. It's just the way that I feel like shimmer eyeshadow sticks work. I've just never been totally blown away by one. Even though it's very pretty, I've just never been totally blown away by one. Oh boy. They don't wanna come off though. Okay, next we have the YSL Candy Glaze versus my loves, the Glossy Bombs. I think that's what they're called. The Phantom Glossy Bombs from Hourglass. So this happens to be in mist and they're very similar delivery systems in the, you know, crank up. This one will actually crank back down. This one will not, you know, it's like, such a loose gloss formula that it almost doesn't want to stay in this tube. Do you know what I mean? Like it really has like such low viscosity. So I'm not going to swatch the clear one. That's silly. I do have a shade in it that I bought. I was sent the clear one, but I love the candy glaze so much that I bought 15, which I think is nude. Oh, there's a lot of them that are called something nude. That's not helpful at all. Okay. And then, like I said, I have mist here. So the hourglass is more more pigmented. It is going to give you more of like a, more of a lipstick vibe. Not a lipstick vibe, but more of a lipstick vibe. And as far as comfort is concerned, I find that the Hourglass ones are less committed on the lips. Like when you put them on, they just feel a little looser. They don't feel like they kind of grip onto your lips, which I never would have even noticed was something I wanted until I tried the Candy Glaze and it grips onto your lips. It's 
awesome. I don't know how they did it, but it does. It feels like a donut glaze. Like it's just this really fantastic, like it's ultra, ultra shiny. But when you put it on, you're just like, ooh, like that's not going anywhere in a really, really lovely way. And then it'll be hours later and you're like, oh, it's still there. It's amazing. So while I think that the hourglass ones are lovely and they were some of my favorites and they do have plumping to them, you know, it has the, like the minty quality to it. Mmm, y'all, the YSL candy glazes are really, really special. They're really special. This color right here, my mother complains that everything turns like, you know, bright red on her or like a really icky orange and she could wear this. So let's see. Look at that color. Look at it. Ah, oh, beautiful. See, this is a very relevant comparison. We have the Jones Road Gel Bronzer, this is new, versus the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer from Makeup by Mario, and I also have this in light. Now, Makeup by Mario's comes in a lot more shades. This one only comes in three shades. Let's swatch! This is almost done. But I have another one! They sent me another one. Tom hates this product because they were like, it's not it's not doing anything, <laughs> the Makeup by Mario. They were like, everybody talks about this product being so amazing and it's not showing up on me at all. So yeah, some people have said that they wanna use the next deeper shade so that it shows up, but the main thing here to note, whether or not you agree with that, it's about understanding the differences between what these products were designed to do. Like the bronzer from Jones Road is a bronzer and it's a gel bronzer and it's gorgeous and it reminds me a lot of like the Milk Makeup Bionic Bronzer. Like they're really extraordinarily similar. I'm not sure if you had them in like samples that weren't packaged, like that I would be able to tell them apart. You know, I just think that they're both really, really excellent in that gel execution. And then the Makeup by Mario, like this one dries down. The Makeup by Mario doesn't really dry down. It just stays as kind of this like gel weight, extraordinarily thin texture on the skin. And I do feel like it is meant to just enhance. It's like if your eyes notice the nuanced differences between your cheek being like, you know, 10% more bronze and that that makes a huge difference to you, especially if you're quite pale or you're just very sensitive to your face being a different color than your body or something and you just don't want to over bronze, it makes a huge difference. Or like if your foundation is quite light because you don't want it again to look different from the rest of your body, but you do still feel like it's a little pasty for your cheeks or something. I feel like that's what the Makeup by Mario does and I find it incredibly useful for that. I don't know, it does so much work for me in terms of just getting like an even gradient where I'm not ending up with like a lot of contrast between my concealer and all the different parts of my face. Like no one wants that like blanked out paper look where it looks like you know what I mean just like spots of color and for me it is such like a makeup artistry oriented product that is helping to like blend in ways that your eyes don't necessarily recognize but they would recognize if it wasn't there kind of thing and the texture is so well executed for that so bronzer skin enhancer I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> LH Cosmetics Bronzer versus Victoria Beckham Bronzer. <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna probably include another one in the mix here because it's brand new and y'all haven't seen it on my channel yet. So I'm, I'm setting down the Victoria Beckham one because I have broken it, but I'll order another pan at some point. So this one comes in a duo. So this is the matte bronzing brick and I have it in the shade one. And you'll notice that, you know, while this one is kind of a bronzer, I don't really use that one as much. I use it on my eyes, but I don't really use it on my face that much. The lighter shade here is just very, very close to my skin tone and it kind of serves like a powder version of that my Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer, the way that it just blends things together. Versus Always, which good grief, that is the smoothest formula. Oh, when you touch it, you're just like, are you freaking kidding me? From LH Cosmetics, it's just a different breed. It's a different color. It's a different texture. And do you see how it's like kind of, it, this is so personal, but it's kind of just if someone were to like turn up the saturation on my own skin tone. So that's why I like this so much. And if you watch me because you're a skin twin, this is a bronzer that's going to look so natural on you just because of the shade. And it does come in four shades. They are very good. And 
the formula is outstanding. It's so excellent. I mean, to the point that, like I always say, I don't love this packaging. This does not appeal to me, but I still use the crap out of it. And that should speak volumes to how much I like it because I'm willing to interact with something that doesn't really tantalize me, you know? It's blurring. It's gorgeous. I love both of these for completely different reasons. This is more of a bronzer. These are just like these, like almost like adjusters for my face. I don't think you need to run out and buy the Victoria Beckham Duo for the sake of like needing a bronzer. It is more about that, again, makeup artistry of being like, it's almost undetectable, but your eye would detect if it wasn't there. Is that helpful? I don't know. It's just a really pale bronzer. I think that that's the main thing. And I use it in everything. I use it in my eyes. You know, I use it to smooth out everything. Here's a throwback. Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint versus the Typology Skin Tint. So obviously the first main thing here is that the Ilia has SPF in it, you know, and Typology doesn't. Typology also also comes in like five shades or something. And the Ilia comes in a lot more than that. I'm pretty sure this Ilia is ultra expired. Yeah, she's chonky, but I'll at least be able to speak to it here. Now don't sleep on that typology, okay? It is so lightweight and it's so gorgeous and it's almost like a gel serum. They just did a really fantastic job with it. The Ilia is wildly dewy, like dewy, 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 make reverse emulsion level dewy on the skin. If you want that gorgeous dewy effect on your skin and you want like a level three in coverage, go for the Ilia. If you want your SPF to be separate from your skin tint and you want probably like a three and a half or a four in terms of coverage, go for the typology. Yeah, that's about all I got. You know, the main thing I think is whether or not you want SPF and the typology is going to be more of a natural finish and the Ilia is going to be like the dewiest thing you've ever used. Up there with like the new hourglass. This is an interesting comparison because I think about it all the time. The Hindash Color Fluid versus the About Face. I just hit myself in the About Face with that matte fluid eye paint. Oh my gosh, how? Can I compare and decide between two of my favorite things? I have become such a liquid eyeshadow girly because, you know, there are just such great formulas on the market right now that perform so well. So one of the biggest distinctions here, and I know Hindash would be like, you know, quietly yelling in Taurus at me right now. The color fluids are not just eyeshadows. I use them as eyeliners. I, you can mix them with your foundation. You can use them as blush. You can use them as contour. You can, you know, there are several shades in it, but oh my God. The main thing that I notice between the two of them is that this is just a slightly, just, I mean, ever so slightly less elegant formula, the About Face, because it is an eye paint. It is specifically an eye paint. Does that mean it doesn't blur beautifully at the edges? Absolutely not. It will blur beautifully at the edges. Does that mean it's not all day long wearing? Absolutely not. It is all day long wearing. It's just a little drier and a little more prone to like cracking if you apply a ton of it or something. Whereas like the Hindash color fluid, I don't know how he did it. I don't know how he did it. I don't know how he made something that doesn't stiffen my brushes, works as an eyeliner, mixes in with my foundations, works as an eyeshadow and blurs beautifully, never creases, won't wash off for your life. I mean, it will, but I'm talking about like, you know, it's not water soluble. They're wild. I don't know, I don't know what they are, but it's really hard to decide because I like them both. I like them both so much. And I mean, think about this, right? There's like a gazillion colors in this and they're a lot less expensive. So I mean, think of them as a paint palette. Whereas I do think differently of these in terms of like, this is a tool, right? To mix in with just about anything. But the Hindash, it's just, it's so thin. It's so thin and it's so rich with pigment. It's just so amazing. I'm not gonna even try to get that off my hand. It will hurt. Natalie asks, dirty martini or espresso martini? Girl, dirty martini all day long. An espresso martini is like a chocolate covered espresso bean. When am I supposed to be drinking that? What time of my day am I supposed to have an espresso fricking martini? So you're gonna make me ruin my night and my morning? <sighs> <laughs> Sounds horrible. Victoria Beckham blushes or persona. This one tripped me up because I don't like either one. Her blushes, Victoria Beckham's blushes are my least favorite thing in her line because I just found them to be kind of finicky. They're not really smooth enough for me. I feel like when they go on, they're just kind of skippy. They don't thrill me. I want a little bit more slip and a little bit more just like put it on for me for the price. The persona blushes, same deal. I've just never found there to be a really good agreement between the amount of pigment in the formula and the actual formula, like the finish of it. And I ended up, I, I mean, I have doubles and triples and, and quadruples of them because they send them to me in PR a lot, but I ended up giving like a whole set of them to Natalie because I was like, 
I can't get them to work. The colors don't totally work for me. So like, I, this is a rare neither for me. I would say um, I have a release coming up soon with Finding Ferdinand and um, I would just hold tight until August 11th because that's when we're doing the announcement and I'll put up a video and everything giving you a tour of the entire line, but it's going to be very exciting. And the beauty of Finding Ferdinand is if you don't like what I made, you can make your own. <laughs> that's the beauty of Finding Ferdinand. Okay, Uma Beauty Contour. Oh, that's right, I was gonna show y'all. So Uma just sent me a bunch of PR and best I can tell, I'm not on embargo for it, but it hasn't come out yet. Look at this freaking bronzer. Y'all, look at that color. This is in white pearl. Uh, yeah, those are swatches. That's the Victoria Beckham, and that's the Uma. What? What? Pale people, are you kidding? Look at that. That's, this is never going back into storage. This thing is wild. Like, that color is so good. It's so good. Hello, you're fantastic, I love you. Yes. It's so good. And then also in just an incredible show of listening to their constituency, look at this. This is the new version of this. So the Uma Double Take Sculpt and Strobe Duo Stick, which I use constantly to the point that I have two of them, one of them much more used than the other. They just sent me this and it's in like Westman Atelier style packaging and they have separated the highlighter out from the bronzer. I mean, from the contour. Y'all, this is a game changer. And I know that this is so silly, so silly, but like if you've ever had more than one of the Westman Atelier tubes that are like this, the magnets inside of them repel one another on your desk. It'll drive you crazy. You'll set them down next to each other. And one of them will just take a dive off the table. Not these, they stick together. How do they do it? I don't know, how do magnets work? It's just a nice little touch. I just think that everything here is just so well done. The red on the inside, come on. Oma is like becoming one of my absolute favorite brands. Like they're just nailing it. Full send, like just going for the packaging, the ease of use, this is luxury, and they get me on my color theory kink. It's just, it's perfect. They just do such a good job. Anyway, between the two, because I did just use this for the first time today, Day, the new one. Somebody probably is just kind of wanting me to swatch these next to each other. And I did just do a YouTube short. So this will be up on your feeds in a more digestible format soon. But that is the Oma contour and that's bright side. Bright side from Rare Beauty is very much like the beginner's contour bronzer shade for fair, fair skin. I mean, I would not put this on deep skin, but it's going to be a safe enough shade that you're not going to end up with like gray on your face, but it's also cool toned enough that you're not going to end up looking like you kind of like put a big orange stripe on your face because you're working with the wrong product in the wrong place kind of thing. I never like to say the wrong, you know, wrong, like it's wrong, but in terms of building an illusion, I don't make the rules of color theory and it does need to be relatively cool toned versus the other things on your skin in order to create a believable illusion and I feel like this is one that will kind of bridge your bronzer and your contour in a way that's not as high stakes. That's the difference. This is just a little bit warmer. Well, there you go. I just rubbed the living daylights out of those two swatches and the Hindash stuck around better. Just scientific as heck, huh? Most favorite nude blush from your collection right now. Stay tuned. I'm wearing it right now. Stay tuned. All right, y'all. That's where I'm gonna end it today, but I'm going to put a this or that playlist up here for y'all to check out because so many of your questions have already been answered, swatched to death and studied exhaustively in the previous iterations of this series. So definitely go check those out if your question wasn't answered. I hope you'll enjoy this. If you did, please do give the video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. And again, if you are not already subscribed, I, I hear that cool people subscribe. That's just what I've heard. So subscribe if you're cool. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.